Hi, everybody. Um, for those of you looking at the title of this Facebook Live, it's probably not what you expected in the middle of your Monday morning. Um, but um, I felt very strongly that I need to share some things um, with you. Um, so y'all pray that my Facebook feed does not hiccup and all that stuff. I've been praying and um, I have a lot of my friends um, praying for me. Hey, Kaylee, I love you. Um, I've got my friends praying for me this morning and um, just covering me in prayer. This is something that um, if you have been around my ministry at all um, in the last uh, 16 years, I guess, and the last 10 years in youth ministry, um, this is not a secret to you. Um, I share uh, quite often that it's part of my testimony and part of my past, but God wants me to tell my story today. So, um, wow, y'all just pray that I can get through this and that it ministers to whoever is supposed to see this. So, um, first off, I want to say if if you're watching this and you've had an abortion, um, you are not alone. Statistics say that um, three out of every 10 women under the age of 45, or up to the age of 45, um, have had abortions. And so um, I want you to know that you're not alone in this, and many of you have kept it silent and secret, and uh, some of you, your husbands don't even know. And um, I'm here to tell you today that God heals you and can restore you, and um, you can get to a place where you can forgive yourself, and um, it's pretty um, amazing what God has done in my life and, and how He's walked me through this journey. Um, so, uh, this video is going to be a little bit long. It's not going to be two minutes, just so you know. Um, so, if you need to come back later and catch it, you can. <laughs> um, but I need to say whatever God has for me to say here. So, um, oh, drink of water, I have tissue, I have notes. Mm. Okay, Lord, here we go. So, um, I want to say a couple of things before I get started. Number one, some of you are my family members, and this is the first that you're hearing of this. Um, some of you live out of state, and or I've not talked in a long time, and you really don't know this part of my life. So, I hope that you will be watching it, uh, watching this testimony with uh, love and grace and peace in your heart um, for me and my family and what we went through, and um, I... Just pray that you um, watch it with grace. And um, I will say also that when this happened, I was very young. I was 14 years old. And um, my mother and I were not Christians at the time at all. Um, so I love you guys. Thank you for the encouragement. Um, uh, my mom and I were not Christians. And uh, we are both new creatures in Christ. Hallelujah. And um, so the things that I share, um, I hope that you do not... Uh, judge or hold against um, me and my mom um, because we did not know the Lord and we're very scared in our lives at that moment. Um, so I was 14 years old and um, I had lost my virginity to a guy and uh, we had a relationship for about three or four months um, after that and we broke up. And not long after we broke up, um, it was a few weeks, two or three weeks after we broke up, I um, realized I was at a friend's house and she mentioned being on her period and I realized I had missed mine. And so um, she, I was like, oh man, you know, I need to take a pregnancy test. And so I did and I was. Um, I was in ninth grade at the time. I see a couple of you from high school um, on here. This is so crazy watching. Gosh, I'm gonna try to get through this without crying. Um, I was in ninth grade at the time, and um, due to the time of year that it was, um, that this uh, that I found out I was pregnant and stuff, um, it was towards the beginning of um, December when I found out, and um, we were. Um, gosh, my family's on here. Hi, guys. Um, so anyway, uh, like I said, I was in ninth grade, and um, so I told the guy that I was pregnant, and um, many horrible things were said and um, to me, and essentially, um, I told my mom the next day, and like I said, my mom was not a Christian, my mom was a single mom, raising a 14-year-old um, daughter by herself, 
and um, I see my internet connection's messing up, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, she was very scared as well. And so um, she said, you're, you're gonna get an abortion. And um, we talked about other options. You know, I said I wanted to have the baby and give it up for adoption. And um, that um, it just wound up not working out that way. I don't know how to describe it. There's no, there's no, um, right answer there. You know, I have um, an 18 year old son. I could not imagine uh, four years ago him coming to me saying that his girlfriend was pregnant. I mean, that just, you know, 14 is so young. And um, anyway, the choice was mine though. I do want that to be known and said. My mom directed me at the best of her guidance, um, but the choice was mine. I, I take full responsibility for, um, for that because at any time I could have forced the issue. It was my body, it was my choice, so I could have forced the issue. Um, so anyway, um, a few weeks later, um, on December the 22nd, um, I don't know what year it was, do the math, I was 14, I'm 39 now, I don't know. Um, December 22nd, um, we went to the abortion clinic and um, we had to go the day before because I was underage. At the time in the state of Tennessee, you have to go and, and, you, and they have to like tell you your options and show you this little video, which was a joke, but anyway. Um, and you know, you had to wait 24 hours and come back. So we waited 24 hours, we went back. Um, I apologize, of, I don't know what details God's gonna have me to share, but I apologize ahead of time if it makes you uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable, I'm very uncomfortable right now. Um, <clears throat> So I remember going to, we went to Planned Parenthood in Nashville, and I remember um, walking down the sidewalk um, from where we had to park, and I remember there were protesters across the street, um, not many, just two or three, and um, you know they were just yelling, don't do it, don't do it, and um, I wished with everything in my being that one of them would come over and physically grab me. But they didn't, they couldn't, all all. Um, and so anyway, we go in, and um, they asked me again, I was I sure that, um, that this was my choice and what I was doing? And I said that it was. And you know, the waiting room was full of women that, um, it was full of women. It wasn't just teenage girls and it wasn't white girls or black girls or Hispanic girls. It was all everything. It was every walk of life. It wasn't just rich ladies or poor ladies or, you know, um, it was husbands and wives. It was parents with their daughters like me. It was, you know, boyfriends and girlfriends and they were scared and, um, you know, some of them were not scared. Some of them were nonchalant, like nothing was going on that day. Um, but maybe that's how they cope. I don't know. Um, so anyway, um, I know that uh, abortions are done in different ways and things. Um, nowadays, sometimes you're put to sleep. Um, sometimes they take a pill, things like that. Um, when I had mine done, I was 10 and a half weeks along and um, they gave me an extra strength Tylenol and they sent me back into a room. And I got back into that room and I saw um, I saw the, the counter along the back wall, and um, I saw a jar on the counter that I knew what that was for. And um, I was very scared. I'd never even had a physical exam until the day before when they had examined me. I was 14. And um, the nurse came in to the room and the doctor and I don't remember the doctor or anything. I don't even remember what the nurse looked like. I just remember I would not let go of her. Every time she would try to leave my side to assist the doctor, I was, I was, don't leave me, like grabbing a hold of her. I was terrified. And they had to actually call another nurse in to assist the doctor. And um, they, um, you know, start the procedure so back then um and 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 i'm saying back then i don't i'm assuming they do the same things now um but they used um dilating rods to dilate my cervix which is extremely painful so um you can imagine when a woman goes through labor 
she uh, her cervix dilates from zero to ten for that baby to come out and um, I forget to what extent they dilated my cervix um, but it was it was like a five or a six, I think, um, that they dilate your cervix to um, at that time. And um, they use these rods that are like one centimeter, three centimeter, centimeter, and it's all done very quickly. So, um, you know, there's no hours or anything like that. It's done very quickly with my extra strength Tylenol. And so I, um, anyway, it was very horrible. And, um, and then there's the noise of the vacuum and the suctioning and, and um, those things that you don't forget. Those things that stay with you at night. Um, those things like that. So anyway, then I went into another room and um, there was, this was the most horrible room. Can I just tell you about this room? It was horrible. This room is all you can do after they had abortion. So it is your like after abortion room. They give you a pad to make sure you're not bleeding out. And they put you in a room with all these uh, recliners. They put me in a room with all these recliners and a hot water bottle on my stomach. And so all these women are in there. And again, different reactions, different walks of life, different things going on. I was just crying. Like I could not stop crying I was crying 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 and all I remember about that room besides that was or about the, my time there we had to stay there for an hour or two hours I can't remember how long um but um the girl next to me came and uh sat down and um she said uh she said are you okay and I was like no I'm not okay like who's okay after this and um, she said, you the one screaming? And I said, yeah. And I turned over and um, just shut my eyes and tried to, you know, sit there, I guess, with my thoughts. Um, and we left and we went and got something to eat. And then the next day, we went to Mississippi um, to go see my grandparents for Christmas. And I had to act like nothing had happened. I had to shut everything off. I was 14 and I had to shut everything down and um, I didn't even really get time to process what I had just done um, or what I'd been through. Now, from a spiritual perspective, <laughs> um, I was not raised in church. I knew about God. I knew about heaven. I knew about hell. I knew um, that I had just committed murder and I knew that I was going to hell. That's what I knew. I did not know about grace. I did not know about a Savior that died for me, fully understanding that. So I went through a very, very self-destructive time. So those of you that are watching that I was in high school with, I'm sorry for the mean, evil person that I became um, over the next few years. That was in ninth grade, so the rest of ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th, I was not nice because I was miserable within myself. I was um, self-destructive. I was, um, I, I abused alcohol and drugs and I slept around and I drove around in stolen cars and I, um, I had no self-worth at all. I did a lot of living in the next three years. I did a lot of things that most people don't even do or go through in their adulthood and I did it in the next three years because I didn't think that I was worth anything else. I didn't think that, um, you know, why well, value myself, right? Why well, value myself because I was already this, you know, slut for lack of better terms, um, in my mind because I had allowed this thing to happen and then I was a murderer on top of that. So. Um, and I say this because I know there are women out there that have gone through this and they feel, you feel worthless. And I just want to talk to you for just a second. You feel worthless and you feel like God can never use you and God can never love you and forgive you. And you can never have a productive family. You can never have a good life. And let me tell you, that is a lie. I am living proof that that is a lie straight from the enemy. So I just want to stop and tell you that. Um, 
I thought of killing myself. I had suicidal thoughts. Um, the only reason I did not kill myself when I, um, was because I was laying in my room and I was thinking of ways to do it. And then um, I thought, my mom, I don't want my mom after having gone through this to wake up and find me. So I didn't do it because of my mom. Um, so thank God for mamas. Um, and I would pray and I would ask God, I would say, God, please don't let me go to hell. Please don't let me go to hell. I know I deserve it, but please don't let me go to hell. And, um, and he didn't. He's so good. So anyway, fast forward a few years later and I met Chris and um, his amazing mother that was a Christian and I started going to Bible studies and things with her family and with her friends and they started telling me about the love of God and um, I was like, man, if y'all knew like what I had been through, I mean, because every guy that I had come into contact with up until that point, um, every man, I mean, like, there's more to my testimony that I won't share right now, but my experience with men up until that point had not been a good one. I'll say that. And so I thought if there's this guy, this Jesus, okay, and if he's so great, like, what does he want from me? What what's the catch here because I don't trust men I don't trust their intentions I don't trust it so what what's the catch and um and so I told them I said if y'all knew what I had done uh you would be singing a different tune and they said well tell us at the bible study so I said okay so I just threw all my junk out in the middle of the living room floor so to speak at my mother-in-law's And um, those women looked at me with such grace and such compassion and such love in their eyes. And they said, no, God forgives that too. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. And he came to forgive you, even for that, even for killing one of his precious children. Um, and I said, man, what? You know, what's the catch with that? What do I, how do I get that? How do I get his forgiveness? And they told me, you know, just ask God into your heart. And then you live your life for him from now on. So when I got saved, I became radically saved. Um, I knew I was going to hell. And I knew that I had met a savior that was going to save me from that. And for the rest of my days, if he never did one more thing for me, that was enough for me to praise him with every breath out of my body right there because I knew what I was. And then I knew this new person I became when I came to him. And because of that, I can never stop to praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Um, but beyond that, he's done so much more. So I got married and I wanted to share this with you because again, I believe women are going to watch this live or, or later that have been through this. I got married and um, I married 17. I got married really young, but I think, honestly, I think my mom was scared I was going to mess up my life even more if I didn't hurry up and get married. Um, so I love you too, cousin. Um, so, um, so I got married at 17 and we waited three years to try to have a baby. And I wanted a baby so desperately bad. I don't know if it was because. I wanted to do right this time, you know, like not a, I don't want to say a replacement because it's not a replacement, but, um, you know, I just, I wanted so desperately to do it right and to have a baby and to raise a child for God. And, um, so we tried for a year to get pregnant in a year. I get pregnant when I'm 14 off of an accident off of two seconds. And then for a year, we tried to get pregnant, and I could not get pregnant. And I kept thinking every month I would go and have my period. And I'll be like, God, are you punishing me? Am I never going to have, you know, this is the deepest desire of my heart. I could not get my mind off of it. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. And um, for a year, we tried to get pregnant. And it didn't happen. And then finally, I got pregnant. And... Uh, we got really excited and we told the family and then I miscarried 
So then again, I'm like, God, what is going on? Like, why, you know, I thought you've forgiven me. I thought I've gotten my life right. You know, I'm living my life for you now. I was in church all the time. I mean, just, you know, like, what is the deal? And God is not a bargaining chip. You know, let me tell you that. God is not a bargaining chip. You can't, you can't come to God and be like, okay, God, I want you to fix everything in my life. You know, if I come to God, he's going to fix my marriage. He's going to make everything perfect. That's not how it works, okay? Because there's still the enemy out there. There's still... Um, consequences for your earthly actions you know if I had committed a crime and was in jail you know things like that there's still consequences um, but God um, he's there let me tell you he is there and he wants to minister to your needs so anyway um, after I miscarried three months later we got pregnant um, with Christopher who if you know me he is the apple of my eye the love of my life I had him and um, my mother-in-law gave me a, a picture frame and it says, for this child I have prayed. And you know from the Bible, um, that was Hannah and she said, for this child I, I have prayed and as long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. And I thought, God, this is your kid. This is your child that you give me and I give him back to you. So I gave Christopher back to God and he was born. In my heart, I said, God, this is your child. And I looked at him, I looked at raising him as if I was raising God's child. Like he just looked, put him on loan to me to babysit for 18 years or whenever till he grows up and moves out. And, um, and he's God's child. So because of that, I dove into God even deeper. I dove into his word. I said, God, I'm raising somebody's husband, somebody's father, and I want him to be a good man. I don't want him to be what I had encountered. I wanted him to be a good man. And God gave me a wonderful husband. And, you know, I just want to tell you, it was, it was about seven years or longer, seven or eight years probably before I forgave myself. And God worked on me and worked on me and he still works on me. Man, it still just hits me just out of the blue sometimes. It's been 24 years ago. I mean, man, it just, it'll hit you, you know? And um, so it never goes away. Those of you watching, it never goes away. But what happens is you receive God's grace and you receive God's healing and you receive God's mercy. And that's what he did. He healed my life. He gave me a wonderful, amazing, I mean, I've been married for uh, 22 years, I think, in July, and um, I have an amazing, amazing life, and it's all because of God. So don't let your past dictate your future. Don't let what you were be who you are, because you're different. Um, if you don't know God, if you haven't accepted grace and forgiveness in your heart, i beg you do not wait another moment message me call me i will talk to you walk you through it um anyway i don't know how to end this god wanted me to share i don't know how long i've been talking thank you for watching um i'm sure god's gonna have me share more on this later and continue to mister but the main thing is if you're a woman and you've gone through this i want you to know that god loves you and that he's there for you, and that there is grace and mercy at the foot of the cross. Um, you can have a productive life. You can have an amazing marriage. I've got a ministry. I get to speak the word. Um, God uses the foolish to confound the wise. <laughs> um, and I'm the foolish for sure. Who am I? But um, God uses my story, and he's going to use it. And he's going to use your story to touch people. So... Um, I pray that this has helped somebody. I pray that you'll share it with your friends and that it helps them. And um, God is good. He's so good. Thank you for praying for me to get me through this. And my family, I love you that are watching this. And uh, thank you for um, watching and for being there. I think that's all that I have to say. So I hope you guys have a good day.